I get a lot of questions on the channel about what tools and equipment that I use to make my content. A lot of them are around the thermal cameras. Now I have reviewed many of the thermal cameras that I use on this channel. The most common one is this, the Infra P2 Pro, and I will put a link to that review below. What I do use though alongside this camera is a third party piece of software to allow me to attach the camera to my PC and get the very best from it. This software is called IRCAM. Now this software isn't free, it is a paid piece of software, but it has some really great functionality that you might be interested in if you have got one of these cameras. Now today what I'm going to do is give you an overview of this software. It is incredibly powerful so I'm not going to get into everything, but more than anything I'm just going to give you an idea of what IRCAM can do. I'm going to talk about the cost, the features, and at the end I'll just share with you some thoughts on it. Now just to be crystal clear, I've decided to make this video because I actually think this software is really good. I was originally shared a free version of this software, but I have now purchased a license at full price for this software. So I am a customer just like you would be, and I'm making this video as a recommendation as someone who has actually bought it for himself. Now, the first thing to understand about IRCAM is the fact that it is not free. It is closed source. It is a piece of software that you do need to purchase a license for. You can download a copy and try it for free. However, you don't have all of the functionality and it is a limited time trial. Now, price wise, the software costs 90 euros plus VAT. For what you get for that, I think it's incredible value. However, it is something I just want to make sure you do understand up front. Now, they do have a website where you can go and take a look at the software. There will be a link to it in the description. You can see here they talk about some of the use cases, the features of the software. It doesn't work with every thermal camera on the market. It has a specific list of cameras that it does support today. That is continuing to expand. We'll take a look at that a bit more in a minute. But you can see here they talk about it being good for advanced data analysis, real-time monitoring, wide camera support, and they also have a Discord community as well. You can see here some of the things that you can do with it. They talk about the multiple color palettes, analyzing data from it. Obviously the thermal camera performance is going to depend on the module you're using, but there's some really nice features in this to get the best from your camera as well, which I'll show you a bit more on later on. You've got things like multi-window, post data analysis into MATLAB as well. And really there's a lot of functionality here that the manufacturers of your cameras simply don't include in their standard software. And that's what makes this really different from the apps and the programs that the manufacturers include. Now, with regards to the supported list of cameras today, it supports many of the modules from Infrared. I'm going to be using this with the Infrared P2 Pro, but it does support many of the other models that I have reviewed on this channel. I do have a review of the P2 Pro as well, as I've said already, and I will put a link to that down below. But alongside Infrared, it supports Topdon and a few other models that you can see listed here. With regards to the system requirements, it's fairly straightforward. There is nothing harsh here in the software. Pretty basic, Windows 10 onwards, 2 gig of RAM, 1 gig of video memory, really processor 1.2 gigs onwards. So pretty much most PCs will be able to run this. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is install the software and license it. I'm not going to walk you through that in this video, but once you've got to that stage, you should see this screen like I'm showing you here. Now, I'm going to use the P2 Pro with this today. So I'm just going to plug this in to the USB port on my computer. I'm using it via a USB-C extension. And what we're then going to do is under the settings screen, select our camera from the list. So for me, it is the P2 Pro. And then we're going to click connect. It will give us a warning on the drivers just pay attention to that if you're having issues and then once we're connected you should see it go connected up there once you're connected you then go onto the stream window and you should see your camera kick in like you see there I'm just going to look at the screen with it on the side now what i'm going to do here is walk you through the basic features and then i'll show you a demonstration of it looking at some boards on the bench now at the top we have the option for setting our color palette. Now this is the same settings you would find on any thermal camera. There is an incredible amount of options under here. I'm not gonna go through every one. At the top, you can see we've got that, we've got gray, we've got lava, we've got so many different options depending on what you wanna choose. It's almost infinite, actually, the amount of options they've given you. It isn't, but you know what I mean. And then you've got all black, which doesn't really do much. Ooh, that's a good one. Look at that emissive map. And then we're going to select today to continue. We're going to look for 
infrared that's the one I will use on this camera at the moment. Now, below this, you've then got the option for dual colour palette. So you can actually set a second colour palette with a window to look at on the screen. So, for instance, if we pick this option down here, and if I just drag this box out, you can see we can set a separate colour palette for that specific area. So on different parts of the screen, you can choose a different color palette. So Tesla there, we can do that rain one there. So for instance, if you wanted to look at one part of your board with one color palette or one part of it with one thing and one part with the other, you absolutely can. Then down the bottom here, we've got all our main controls. So I'm gonna walk through these one at a time. We've got a calibrate option if your camera supports it. We've got a temperature change range option up here if we want to adjust it. So if your camera has that functionality, we've got a maximum temperature tracker. So if I just turn that on, you can now see it's gonna track the maximum temperature that the camera is picking up. We've got a minimum tracker, so maximum and min. And then you've got a center tracker as well, which you can turn on and off. You'll also notice that there is one here called TM2. We can set individual temperature trackers on the screen as well. So we can set our own temperature trackers where we want them. So if we want to look at one specific part of the image, we can do, and we can track that temperature there as well if we want to. And you can add these simply by clicking this button here. You can add as many of these in as you need and place them where you want them on the image. We then have the option for adding a temperature line. So again, it will track the temperature across a line. So there it'll track the maximum and minimum. We've got the option for showing a live view histogram. So on the side, if I turn that on, you can see the histogram up there down the side. My head's in the way of it at the bottom, but you can see it's appeared there. If we want to reset everything that's on the screen, I can just go down and click delete all and that'll clear off all of the additional temperature measurements that I added. And now we're back to square one. Below this, we've then got add a region of interest. So again, you can add a box that you want it to keep an eye of the temperature in. We've got a mouse tracking temperature. This is actually really cool. So wherever you put the mouse, it's going to tell you what the temperature is at that point there. We've got the option to toggle on and off that dual color live view, as I showed you earlier. Let me just reset all of them. So if we wanted that secondary region of interest, we can turn that on there. Now, the next couple of options allow you to improve the image quality on your camera. This thermal camera that I've got here, the P2 Pro, doesn't have a huge resolution, but they do have some features in this which enhance the resolution from the camera. So we have this option here, which is live view image sharpening. So I've turned everything off. You can see there, that's the standard image from the camera itself. If I turn on sharpening, you can see it has made the image sharper, but it does look a lot more blocky. We can, though, then start turning on image enhancement. So we've got image enhanced 1080p, image enhanced 4K. So if I click on the 1080p, we retain the improved detail, but it smooths the image out. And we can even do that on the 4K option as well, which improves things even further. So again, it's just helping you get the most from your thermal camera. And this is really good when looking at PCBs. Below this, we've then got the live view fixed aspect ratio. So you can force it to 16 by nine or four by three. We've got the option to take a snapshot. This will currently save a snapshot of the image to my desktop. We've got the option to open screen capture tool. So I can click that, which will open up your traditional Windows capture tool, allowing you to do screenshots of parts of the image if you need to. You've then got the record option, allowing you to actually record a video stream of your thermal camera. And then down the bottom here, we've got the options for setting the temperature type. So we've got Celsius, Kelvin or Fahrenheit. So you can choose how it actually shows it. We've got an option here to set the trigger actions. This is something we'll take a look at in the menu in a minute. But what's great about this software is you can set up predefined actions to say, take a screenshot every five seconds, 10 seconds, one minute or whatever. But you can also then set triggers beyond that. So you can say in the event of the temperature in this area getting over this level, trigger this event, that event 
might be an alarm, that event might be a screen capture, a recording, and you can do all of that from the settings menu, and we'll look at that in a second. Finally then, we've got a few more options. We've got save a full frame of temperature data as a CSV, and then we've got show live statistics. If I just click that, it gives us an overview on the display of the statistics from the camera. You can see everything there being shown on the screen. Now, below the stream screen, we also have 3D Surface. Now, I'll be honest, this isn't a feature I've tested a lot. You can see there, it gives this 3D image. There's a bit more info about this on their website, and there is some really cool stuff you can do with this. It isn't something that I have personally touched on in the software yet. Then we have a plot screen. This allows you to plot the temperatures from the camera. So you can plot maximum, minimum, and you can even plot your own additional temperature points as well if you want to, and that will be plotted there on the screen. And then finally at the bottom, you've got the emissivity option, which again just shows you the type of materials and the emissivity values down there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we also have some really cool features around triggers and then capturing data around that. In the main settings, you've got all of the settings for the main app, but at the bottom, we've got temperature alarm configuration, which allows you to set alarms for different temperatures. You can set it for a range, you can set it for a high temperature, a low temperature, and then you can set the action that you want it to do. So for instance, you can say on maximum temp, alarm type for above, you can set the temperature and you can say, trigger data login, take a snapshot, and you can enable all of that within the software. You can set an alarm to go off, and again, you can trigger that off the various things that you've set in it as well, so your temperature measurement points. So you can set this up on a fixed thermal camera to look at a device, and if the temperature goes above a certain level, you can ask it to trigger an alarm, but also then trigger a set of events. Below this, you've then got the general and periodic trigger events. So again, you can do things like, say, just take a snapshot every minute, every hour, every day. It's set up in seconds. You can tell it to record video, start recording, stop recording. Again, you can enable these from the menu and it just gives you a huge amount of options around how you can actually use this thermal camera. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is just give you a quick demo of this software looking at a PCB on the bench. Now, we're looking here at a flight controller. It's got a regulator here. And then if I just move the camera out a bit, you can see there we've got the main MCU. Now, at the moment, I've got all of the additional functionality turned on with the enhancing. So, for instance, if I just turn the enhance modes off, you can see there that's how it would look without any enhancements. But what we can do is improve the image with a bit more detail, and then we can turn on the 4K enhance, which then just gives us a slightly better view compared to what we had before. If I just grab the camera and go in a bit closer, you can see there that it does give us some real nice detail on the components. Now, if we just take a look at this little regulator here, which is showing up in the center, what we can see is that that is the hotspot there. So we can turn on temperature tracking if we wanted to. So track the maximum temperature. We could do a manual track if we wanted to. So either I could do add that one there and then drag that onto there if I wanted to, or alternatively, and one of my favorite ones, it's just the mouse tracking. So you can put your mouse over the top and it gives you an indication there of what the temperature is. You can then turn on your histogram at the side as well if you want it. We also have some options around being able to rotate the image. If you right click on the screen, you have a whole host of options down here as well. So this is where you would delete the additional temperature measurements. But there's another really nice feature, which is live view mouse wheel rotation. I've got this turned on. So if I use my wheel, I can actually rotate the image with the wheel on my mouse. So you don't always have to have your thermal camera set up the right way. Now, one feature I do like on this software is the minimum and max on the side. This allows you to adjust what shows. So again, you can adjust it like this. You can bring the maximum down like that. This is really good for identifying exactly what component is the hottest on the board. You can do it via the tracking, but there are times where you will look at some PCBs and just everything is white out because it's all so hot. So what this then allows you to do is start to ignore everything else. And you can see there that I've adjusted it to the point of, you know, what is the hottest items on the screen? You can see it's that item there. We could track it with the maximum temperature and that would put a dot over the top of it as well. But this is just a nice way of being able to identify it on the board by adjusting the minimum and maxes down there.
Now, as I've said, there are lots of different color palettes available. I'm not going to go through each one, but there's some real nice ones here that are good at showing the different temperatures on the board. So again, if I just bring this out, this one here is really good at identifying the hottest components. So it's not just about having the options to set the temperature. It's about choosing a color palette as well that's going to give you the best possible view of the component, the board, or whatever it is you are looking at. Now, just to demonstrate the kind of things that you can do, I currently have multiple temperature points being measured. We have a region of interest. We have the temperature measurement plot along the bottom, and we even have a trigger set up that when the temperature gets over 59 degrees, it will actually take a capture image of that. That has just happened, and it's taken a capture and put it into a folder on my computer. So again, it just allows you to do so much. You can set it up to view the plot along the bottom and you can log that as well and you can look at that data back later. In fact, you can even export that into things like MATLAB as well. So again, it really does depend what your use case is, how far you want to go. The software has a huge amount of options and capabilities and really it's only limited by your own personal use case. Now there is so much more to this software. I've only touched a little bit on it. If you're interested in finding out more, there will be a link to it in the description. Price-wise, it is purchasable. As I've said, it is 90 euros. And Mara said 99 earlier. It's 90 plus VAT or 108 euros in total. For that, you're getting the software you've seen here today. They do talk about lots of other features on their website as well. There's a lot more to it than I have shown you, but I just wanted to give you an overview of the kind of things that you can do on it. And it's a powerful tool, especially when it does come to post data analysis, as they show you here, because it means you can not only view it in the software, but you can export that data as well into your own applications. So whether you're using it for pro use, medical applications, anything you want to, there are lots of features from it. And again, you can see here, they talk about it on their website. There are a list of cameras, and I'm guessing that is going to expand over time. With regards to the uh, system requirements, it's fairly straightforward. It's fairly lightweight. I'm running it on Windows 10, two gig of memory, a gig of storage, video memory. That's, that's all you need. It, it really does not take up much space at all. And again, there's some talk about the uh, the history of it, and it's a one-time purchase model as well, so it's not a subscription, which is really good to see. I've now actually bought this software. I was sent a license to try on this software a few months ago, and I've been using it extensively on the channel since, but I have now actually bought a license for this software to support the developer, and as I've said already, if you're interested in getting it, there will be a link to it below. Now, I have to say, I really do like this software. It is very good. It just allows you to take what the camera can do to the next level. The software that the manufacturers give is okay. It's basic. It does the job. But you don't remotely have the things that you've seen here today, especially when it comes to the advanced logging features that IRCAM has. Now, as I've said, there will be a review to the P2 Pro below and a link to the software if you want to get it. I want to say a thank you to the developer for initially lending me a version of this software. They sent me a license to try, but as the software has changed a bit now, I've now bought my own license, but it is really good and you will see me continue to use this in the future. Now, if you have any questions, put them down below. And one last thing I just want to say is if you have found this video useful, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of my patrons we are able to keep making content in this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.